When my oldest daughter was young, she was asked once, what does your dad do? And she said, well, he eats things on TV. I did that in those days. That was uh, back when I was doing a show on Discovery Channel called Science to Go. And we went around the country, we filmed food production, we were in restaurants, and I ate a lot of different things. I can't do that for you here today because I'm going to talk about kimchi, the traditional Korean dish which is made with cabbage, oh, peppers of all kinds, uh, of course, lettuce, uh, possibly, radishes, garlic, all kinds of spices. But I can't eat it. Why? Because it also has anchovy paste. And I have a fish allergy, so I've got to stay away from kimchi. Too bad, because it's a very interesting fermented food. What does that mean? Well, cabbage, other vegetables contain naturally occurring bacteria of the lactobacilli type. And they crank out lactic acid, which prevents the growth of other bad bacteria. So when we eat fermented foods like kimchi, we increase our bacterial count in our intestines of these lactobacilli. This is why kimchi is said to be a probiotic it furnishes these good bacteria, but it's also a prebiotic because it has fiber, and fiber feeds those bacteria. So this is good stuff because when these bacteria multiply in our gut, they crank out other chemicals like short-chain fatty acids, which help our immune system. Very interesting. You know, when the first Korean astronaut went into space, that was in 2008, she took along some kimchi because the Korean said, you can't have a Korean astronaut going to space without kimchi. But there was some issue about that because there was some concern that cosmic radiation would cause a mutation in the kimchi and that could have uh, some kind of negative effect or that it would keep fermenting and produce carbon dioxide and explode in space, that is in, in, in the space station. And you don't want to have kimchi bits floating around in the space station. So the Koreans came up with, quote, space kimchi, in which the bacteria were killed using gamma radiation. So the taste was still there, but it was no longer fermenting. And that turned out to be very good, not only for the Korean astronaut, but the others as well, whom she offered the kimchi to, because it seems that in space, your taste buds don't work as well as down here. But kimchi, very tasty, very spicy, so they all appreciated that. Believe it or not, there has been a great deal of research done on kimchi. Traditionally, it has been fermented in these vessels called ongis. And you put in your uh, cabbage, the Chinese cabbage it's called, you put in your spices, you put in the other vegetables, and then traditionally they buried this in the ground and allowed it to ferment and that gave it longevity. So in the long winters, when there was no fresh vegetables to eat, the fermented ones were still good because the lactobacilli had killed off all of the disease-causing bacteria. And today, we know that there are actually some science here. Uh, research papers have been published about this, where they examined the lactobacilli count in uh, kimchi fermented in these vessels as compared to glass or steel vessels and worked better because it seems that the clay of which this vessel is made is porous. It allows excess carbon dioxide to pass through and carbon dioxide, if it builds up, prevents the growth of the, uh, of the bacteria. So a lot of science there. And I wish I could try the kimchi, but I can't. But you know what? I can try sauerkraut. It is basically the same thing. It has the bacteria. Of course, you can't see it unless you look through a powerful microscope. So this too is a probiotic and a prebiotic. And there, I've again eaten something on TV. Polish and German astronauts have gone into space. 
I haven't heard that they took along some sauerkraut. They should have. 